In 2017, Australian developer Team Cherry released what would become one of the most highly acclaimed indie titles of all time, Hollow Knight. With its tight platforming, environmental storytelling, non-linearity, and iconic art style, Hollow Knight was soon regarded as a standout in the Metroidvania genre. Such an influential title was bound to inspire future titles, and in February of 2021, Argentinian developer Roby Studios released a game that wears this inspiration on its sleeve. Blue Fire. Blue Fire opens with nearly zero setup. A castle floating in the sky experiences an energy event of some sort. Then the player takes control of a cloaked warrior floating in a glass chamber. That's it. Such a sparse intro is a bold decision. Where is this? Who is the warrior? What is their purpose? These are all questions that go unanswered at the outset of the journey. What the player is given, however, is a reason for the lack of answers. The warrior doesn't know either. This storytelling technique allows the player to more easily put themselves into the mind of the warrior. They share the driving motivation to discover the truth of what's going on. A truth this review won't spoil, though it is engaging to learn. Though entirely contained within a floating castle, named Penumbra, the journey through Blue Fire brings the warrior to several locations, each with a unique feel and ambience. As with most Metroidvanias, these environments are interconnected and rarely would the player only traverse an environment once. Blue Fire makes great use of backtracking. Areas open bit by bit as the game progresses, which keeps the initial play areas small to allow the player to familiarize themselves with the layout of the world before inviting them to explore something more expansive. Platformers live or die by their controls, and Blue Fire is no exception. While not perfect, the game's controls rarely hamper progression through the base game. The warrior moves at a comfortable speed, but on occasion the controls feel a bit slippery, which can lead to sliding off of platforms or outright missing them. Until the player gets used to Blue Fire's platforming, it can be frustrating at times. Luckily, checkpoints are well placed and the time the player has to jump after sliding off of a platform, called coyote time in the industry, is pretty forgiving. The respawn time is very quick, and the movement ends up being a lot of fun, especially as more movement options are acquired. In a way similar to Hollow Knight's charm system, the player acquires equipable abilities as they progress through Penumbra. These abilities take the form of spirits and give access to upgraded abilities such as a second double jump or increased damage while airborne. Some of the game's later challenges clearly rely on these abilities, especially those that affect movement. While initially limited to three spirits at a time, the warrior spirit capacity can be upgraded to a maximum of 10 spirits, which ensures that the player can choose the most effective set of spirits to best suit their needs. While the base game of Blue Fire doesn't have too many instances of difficult platforming, there are several opportunities for the player to test themselves and their familiarity with the controls. Littered through the environments of Penumbra are statues that lead to the void. Similar to bonus levels in a Super Mario game, these are Blue Fire's true challenge areas. The obstacles are harder to avoid, the platforms are smaller and further apart. These areas are tough, but the reward, extra life for the health bar, is definitely worth it. Although platforming is definitely the main aspect of gameplay, Blue Fire also includes a combat aspect. The warrior is equipped with two blades, a fireball spell, and a shield. The fireball is effective on smaller enemies, where the sword and shield are all but required for the larger ones. Holding the shield will block most damage, but a skilled fighter could use it at just the right time to parry an opponent and open them up for punishment from the sword. Combined with the fast and varied movement options, combat in Blue Fire is quick and engaging. In addition to fighting the normal mooks, Castle Penumbra is not without boss battles. Often taking place in a specialized boss arena, these enemies aren't just powered up versions of the other enemies. These battles are varied, no two are completely alike and each battle makes good use of the player's current available movement abilities. While the bosses aren't always particularly difficult, at least not on the normal difficulty, they are a lot of fun and don't go on for too long. Players that explore the environments after completing the main storyline can stumble upon the post-game, The Void of Sorrows. The Void of Sorrows is a gauntlet of some of the most challenging platforming sections in all of Blue Fire. These challenges culminate with the most difficult boss in the game, this is a fantastic capstone for players who want a greater challenge, but it's not necessary to beat the main game, and players to whom this sort of challenge doesn't appeal are free to skip it. The postgame also gives easy access to the various void challenges in the base game if the players missed some the first time around. Blue Fire has large shoes to fill by standing in the footsteps of one of gaming's most revered titles. 
does Blue Fire fill them and live up to Hollow Knight? No, but Robo Studios has made a very engaging and entertaining game in their attempt. Players can expect a 10-hour game with an additional 3 hours if they tackle the post-game. Is it worth the $20 US price tag? If you're a fan of the genre and a fan of Hollow Knight, yes. If not, still pick it up if it's on sale. A 4 out of 5.